How are we doing, YouTube? It's your boy, Kos, and uh, good evening. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about two things which have come out uh, recently in the Star Wars fandom. And uh, those two things are Bob Eager's autobiography and uh, Star Wars Explained. Now, Bob Eager uh, in his autobiography, I, I've read on Data Racer's Twitter feed, stated that uh, George Lucas was uh, very disappointed and uh, disliked Disney's sequel trilogy. But oh no, I thought Disney could do no wrong. They did a better job. <laughs> Even George Lucas is saying that the sequel trilogy is trash. Like, if that's not how he would have done it. And a, a bunch of people agree that... Agree with Lucas that Disney ruined the franchise. But let's just go through this real quick. Uh, I'm going to cut over and show you uh, precisely what is said in this autobiography. Now, Data Race is saying... Bob Eager's autobiography came out today. And he says, George Lucas <clears throat> doesn't like Disney Star Wars. George Lucas didn't like The Force Awakens. Wow, imagine that. And didn't like we ignored his ideas for the sequel trilogy. Eager, of course, tries to blame George Lucas for not appreciating our hard work. Total hit piece. Now George Lucas seeing The Force Awakens for the first time. Kathy screened The Force Awakens for George. He didn't hide his disappointment. There's nothing new. Precisely what I, he, he said. There's nothing new, he said. In each of the films in the original trilogy, it was important to him to present new worlds, new stories, new characters, and new technologies. There weren't any visual or technical leaps forward. Exactly. People ask me all the time why I don't like uh, Disney Star Wars <clears throat> or Disney in general. Um, Disney lost all of its original, all of its original ideas, uh, probably in the early two thousands. Okay, <clears throat> Disney. George Lucas is an innovator. He's an innovative mind. Okay. Disney is full of imitators. They're, when I tell you they're just looking to, to redo the original trilogy for, for nostalgia points, for uh, <clears throat> quick bucks, y'all don't, don't believe little people like me, but um, let's continue. He wasn't wrong. But he also wasn't appreciating the pressure we were under to give ardent fans a film that felt quintessentially Star Wars. Well, whose fault is that? Honestly, like, you guys wiped out the entire expanded universe. You could have created an adaptation of an expanded universe book or a series. A lot of um, new fans were saying that, um, oh, the Dark Empire saga could have been the... Uh, the final trilogy in the saga. <clears throat> but no, you decided to uh, unnecessarily reboot the entire expanded universe. That means having to redo all of canon uh, after episode six. So whose fault is that? You had a whole expanded universe at your fingertips that you could have uh, continued. But instead you decided to, oh no, it, it's, it's restricting our creative freedom. Like, <laughs> it's amazing how they uh, say, oh, it's restricting our creative freedom and we want to start fresh, but then they're still biting from the, from the, the old canon. It's just like, why didn't you stick with it in the first place? Yeah. So anyway, it, this is just a moot point. Looking back... 
with the perspective of several years and a few more Star Wars films, I believe J.J. achieved the near impossible, creating a perfect bridge between what had been and what was to come. Yeah, okay. Alan Horn and I read George's outline and decided we needed to buy them, though we made clear in the purchase agreement that we would not be contractually obligated to adhere to the plot lines he laid out. Wow. On George's role of creative authority. He knew that I was going to stand firm on the question of creative control, but it wasn't an easy thing for him to accept. So he reluctantly agreed to be available to consult with us at our request. I promised that we would be open to his ideas. This was not a hard promise to make, of course. We would be open to George Lucas's ideas. But like the outline, we'd be under no obligation. <sighs> wow. So basically, George was like, your ideas suck, and this isn't my... This doesn't represent what I gave you. And you said, screw it. <laughs> the ride of a lifetime. Lessons learned from 15 years as CEO of Walt Disney. The truth was, Kathy, JJ, Allen, and I had discussed the direction in which the saga should go. And we all agreed that it wasn't what George had outlined. George knew we weren't contractually bound to anything. But he thought that our buying the story treatments was a tactic, tacit promise that we'd follow them. And he was disappointed that his story had been discarded. You know, I think if I created one of the, one of the biggest franchises of all time, um, and, I, and I sold it, and uh, if I'm consulting you guys, you uh, newbies, um, I think you would be inclined to listen to someone like me who actually knows what they're talking about rather than someone who just got behind the wheel. <laughs> yeah. AKA JJ. But it's just, it, it, it just really saddens me to just uh, see them try to like blame Lucas for, for what they did with Star Wars. It's like they're placing the blame at his feet. Yeah, and he went through all that. He sold his saga just to see you guys screw it, up. screw it all up. I'm sorry about that. Eager was his friend. He trusted him. He'd worked with him for years. Eager betrayed him, basically. He and Kennedy stabbed him in the back. That is the absolute truth. <laughs> A two Brutus. <laughs> but it's really it really saddens me to see that. Yeah, to see just how how this guy was treated. Yeah, he's betrayed by essentially by his fans who keep whining and whining about the prequels, which were all always going to be part of his vision. So he says fine, and he sells it to a person who is supposedly his best friend, um, and says, hey, like, I want to be in an advisory capacity just so I can guide you guys. And that person says, eh, nah, how about no? We're running the show now, we're Disney. <laughs> and basically betrays him too. And now Lucas has to be like, well, at least it wasn't me that made this, <laughs> that made this shit show. <laughs> Eager talks like a person who has absolutely no clue what he's doing. He talks about keeping a move, movie the same as far as the tone, but setting and setting, but leaves out the most important part, the story and well-developed characters. Disney should stick to kiddie cartoons. <laughs> and um, I think it really gives you uh, a lot of insight into just what went down behind the scenes. Um, this guy, Steven, the Phantom Menace illustrator, he's also pretty cool. Uh, you should follow him as well as Data Racer. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of got the feeling when George said he sold Star Wars to the white slavers of Disney. 
yeah, Disney it just sucks the life out of anything they they buy, and they won't respect the original continuity. Like Spider Man, they were probably gonna make Peter Parker like gay or bisexual or whatever. Like so, social justice, they're, they're gonna find a way to stick social justice, feminism, uh, some modern political issue like LGBT, whatever, you know, in there. He wasn't appreciating the pressure we were <laughs> we were under to give the fans something that was Star Wars. What an unbelievably arrogant statement designed to relieve yourself of your own failures. Wow. He accepts no criticism, in my opinion. Jeez. <laughs> of course, <laughs> Data Rest is saying, I bet they reboot the original trilogy in 10 years. And they probably will, they probably will too, <laughs> seeing how they're they're remaking all, all their all their um, original animated films and doing all these redos and people still shell out money because oh my god it's Disney. <laughs> it's just like why would I pay money to see see something I've already seen, you know? Except oh it's live action, just why no. <laughs> Zero uh, w when they when Luke was saying oh this isn't sorry when Luke when Mark Hamill was saying oh this isn't Star Wars uh, people were were upset and then he sort of backtracked a little bit and was like hey, well uh, I guess it's kind of Star Wars that's not what I meant I mean I didn't mean that you know he didn't want to upset Disney. But um, when Mark Hamill was dropping truth bombs about how the sequel trilogy should have been, uh, Disney shows were coming out the woodwork to to mock him and criticize him and call him all kinds of names uh, and shut him down because he was critical of Lord Mickey Mouse and, and freaking Disney Star Wars. Like, you can't have an opinion now, you know? And um, as much as I, I I don't agree with Mark Hamill on, on everything, I mean he's you know he's a he's a Hollywood liberal like you know, but um, I do res respect his opinion in that regard on um, on that issue of how the sequel trilogy was handled, and it was not handled well, you know. Uh, George, and all this just really sucks for George Lucas, you know? And, um, I mean, imagine getting, feeling like you're completing your vision and then people are telling you, the person that created the series, that you're doing it wrong, you know? And then selling it to your best friend and then having, and saying, hey, like, can I just come on, um, as a voice to guide the series forward, and that person is saying, eh, screw you, dude. <laughs> we're not going to do what you do. Like, and you're like, but I created the series. Well, we're not contractually obligated to do any. You know, imagine getting that. You know, it's, it's like eager, eager is a snake. You know, and um, in fact, I had a poll, uh, I'm not sure how many of you saw it, from a couple days ago, where, uh, I genuinely asked whether or not it was possible, um, given the whole uh, save Spider-Man from Sony business from a while back, uh, whether it was possible that similar tactics were used to convince Lucas that everyone hated the prequels and pressure him into selling Star Wars. Because yeah, I grew up with the prequels, and when I I remember seeing them, and everyone was was enthusiastic about them, I left it. I will never forget the day I saw episode three in theaters. I was so excited. I saw it on the premiere. I remember there were people going there in costume. and So many people were, I left that, that theater satisfied. <laughs> Let's just say that. And um, so, so many people were whining about the prequels. I was just like, dude, I remember the prequels raised the bar. 
in my opinion. And you know, every, George Lucas, what I what I said about him earlier, that he's an innovator. You know, he always seeks to to raise the bar, and that's the one thing I always respected about him. He thought that the fight choreography with the uh, lightsaber fights were were out of date, which they were, and uh, needed to reflect an era where uh, there was more technique and you know more training involved in being a Jedi Knight. Um, and he did. He crafted the the prequels to reflect that. And um, people were like, "Oh, the fights are too flashy. It's not like my Star Wars from 1977. Like it's not 1977 anymore. It's not 1980. It's you know, it, it's the new millennium. Like, yeah. And um, of course, people were whining. And he, this man put his heart and soul into the series. He told the story that he wanted to tell, you know, and um, that's what I respected about him. He did what he wanted to do. It was always his vision and no one else's. And now he's like, well, you know, you think Disney, you think you can do better? Go ahead, try it. And they have it. They have it. All they've been able to do is give people a rehash. Um, and so all the, all the articles from back in the early 2000s, which were like, just absolutely sh like shitting on his uh, prequel trilogy. Um, you know, I was wondering if uh, like with Rotten Tomatoes um, and the whole bot thing, if Disney is, is using these tactics, uh, they could have done similar things. Not, not exactly the same, but um, similar tactics uh, beforehand to make it, to just generate the perception that everyone just despises those films, when in fact it's not true, you know, so the prequels generated some of the most um, money out of uh, the Star Wars franchise, you know, people were, were genuinely excited to see these films, you know, episode two maybe not so much, <laughs> but episode two did end on a high note, um, the only thing about episode two was the cheesy love story, but it, it, it was okay, it was all right. Um, but yeah, uh, these are the, the results of the poll, and um, apparently a bunch of people thought that I might be onto something. Um, but in other in other Star Wars news, I mean. Star Wars Explained, I don't know if you guys have uh, heard of his channel, he has all of a sudden blocked half, like, half of the internet. I, I don't know what his problem is. Uh, hang on one second. Today was just an average day until I realized that I got blocked by Star Wars Explained. I don't know what an account with 300 followers and a 16-year-old controlling that account did to hurt the feelings of an account that, has, that almost all Star Wars fans know. Like, I, to be honest, I have no idea what is going on with this kid, but um, so far there have been... Uh, there have been some photos coming up about him in like some some weird weird photos like apparently he was uh in like a like a princess leia costume hold up wait let me see if i can if i can find any of this stuff hold up Oh my God! Yes, here we go. I've been, <laughs> he he blocked me because I follow a better YouTuber named D Day Cobra. Apparently, dang, bro. Yeah, Star Wars explained blocked. Uh... <laughs> and this person says, "Look at it. Is that actually Star Wars explained?" Um, if any of you guys can uh, just let me know. <laughs> That would be ideal, I don't, because I don't know, that, that is just gay as hell. <laughs> like, that is just, no, there is no coming back from that, bro. 
and it gets it gets worse. Soy level over nine thousand. Okay, this doesn't look this does not look real, but um, this looks kind of shopped. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was real. If this is a shop, this is a really good Photoshop. But I think it I think it might be real. I think it might be real. Um, it looks legit to me. Yeah, it, yeah, this is real. Wow, this is really, really weird. That's really creepy. Um, yeah, this is real. <laughs> oh my god, dude. There is no coming back from this, bro. <laughs> this, uh, wow. So, we have a grown-ass man, several grown-ass men in <laughs> In Princess Leia costumes, slave costumes. <laughs> this is wow. No wonder he's blocking everybody. Did Jeremy share this? I, I don't know. I don't freaking know. This this is hilarious. Wow. And uh, I think he even blocked me. Like I'm not. I'm not sure if he blocked me. Hold up. Hold up. He's blo he blocked. <laughs> so I apparently I've been I've been added to the block list. I guess it's because I, I follow uh, Jeremy <laughs> from uh, Geeks and Gamers, and um, I also tweet about the fandom menace. Um, I, I, I guess having having um, different views is is. It's hazardous to him. I don't, I don't know what his deal is, but anyway, um, yeah, you might you might want to check if, if you, you've been blocked by Star Wars Explained lately. Um, apparently, something has really triggered this guy, or maybe his account has been hacked or something. I have no idea. <laughs> well, this is—I uh, don't know if it's the Slave Leia pics or whatever, because that that is just cringe. That is cringy as hell. <laughs> Oh, what? I mean, I, I'm sure someone thought this was funny, but this is just disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> it's your boy Coast, man. Uh, it's just all the shenanigans going around in the Star Wars fandom right now. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, and I'll catch up to you guys with more craziness later. Uh... And check to see if you've been blocked by this clown. All right, it's your boy Coast. Later. Peace.